Why are you walking like that? Because I'm cool. I got swagger, man. This is my... Did you hurt your foot again? Yes, okay. Was it... Were you wearing flip-flops again? Yeah, it was a freak thing. Like, I just walked in the front door, my left foot and the flip-flop just slipped right across the ground, and my toenail went into the door jam, oh, and God. it, like, tore it up, and uh, I did, it was, like, torture. I had to push it down. There's lots of blood. It was rough. You know, so. some definitions of intelligence is learning from past experiences, bad ones when wearing flip-flops, right. and applying those to your future behavior. Welcome back to EPRB TV viewers. It's time for another Listicles with Chris Nichols. Or Hot Take with Jordan Drake. And today we're going to be talking about our favorite hybrid cameras, what we think is best on the market right now for both photo and video in one package. Yeah, my real criteria here is can you handle a whole bunch of different types of photography and a whole bunch of different video gigs with a single camera? Not really specialized tools, but jacks of all trades. So Jordan Drake, what is your hot take on uh, our number five? Well, our number five, I was looking at some Canon cameras because I do have some frustrations with them. And it's really difficult because immediately I'm thinking of the R5, uh, but it has those issue, the overheating problems for sure. video shooters. And then it's like, well, R5C would be a great hybrid, but then you lose the stabilizer for photographers. It's right. all a lot of catches. And then the R3, I'd say, is actually one of their best video cameras, but it is such a dedicated sports, wildlife, right. high frame rate kind of. You couldn't tackle a whole bunch You're of photo You're not going to do jobs. landscape architecture, right. that kind of stuff with that camera. Yeah. So the one that I actually thought was the most well-rounded in their lineup is actually the brand new R7 that we just had. Yeah, I mean, in Florida, you shot our entire episode in the R7, and, and I didn't hear any complaints. You were really enjoying how it was nope. working. Very yeah. capable little camera. I mean, my major complaint is there's no native lens lineup for it, really. You know, you're using sure. full frame RF lenses, but I think, you know, people shooting video are very used to adapting lenses. And if you're in the Canon system, you've got an EF mount. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Yeah. Just get the mount adapted. You'd be using those lenses for the R5 or R5C or any, anyway. Yeah, so, but very capable stills camera. Yeah, I like the photography. 10 bit video, which I was really not expecting with that. Mm. The IBIS is quite capable on it. I found the autofocus overall very usable. You know, the new subject detection seemed to be quite accurate. So, yeah, overall, I think it's a capable shooting camera. Enough megapixels to please most people in their yeah, jobs. More yeah. than an R3. Another sure. reason that we didn't want end up going that route. Uh, yeah, it's a great hybrid camera. Okay, so for my number four pick, I know we just talked about how the Canon R3 is not a great versatile all-around camera because of its lower megapixel count. Right. Now I'm going to suggest a camera with even lower megapixel count. <laughs> but I really do think OM system, Orimpas OM1 is just such, I know, a versatile camera package. I mean, Yes, it's made absolutely for outdoor applications, wildlife, sports, you know, adventure videography, that kind of stuff, fly fishing, right? And that's, that's why I use it, but it's because it's so compact, it's yeah. so rugged, the lenses themselves, that's part of the beauty of that whole system. I can carry a whole bunch of stuff, a uh, whole series of lenses, shoot wildlife telephoto stuff without having a humongous lens plate in my backpack and have space for all the other stuff I need to carry for an outdoor adventure. And even though the megapixel count's only 20, it's a new stack sensor, they made vast improvements for their autofocus, Right. and it works great. For a lot of photographers, they might be worried about the smaller sensor on that, but I think that OM System has done a really good job of compensating for that in most situations. Need more detail, they have the high res mode on that. Mm -hmm. If it's a static scene, the stabilizer is so good that you can shoot extremely long shutter speeds yep. to soak up a bit more light. It's really only like low light action where you're really gonna be hurting with that micro sure. four third sensor. But not having to bring a tripod in a lot of situations, not having to maybe bring filters in a lot of situations, just again, simplifies the whole appeal of having this in the outdoors when you're out on an adventure. Well, it's interesting because you've used Olympus cameras for oh, doing like your outdoor, yeah, what he said, uh, for all of your outdoor stuff. And right. that was knowing that you were taking a big hit in the video quality compared to a lot of other systems out sure. there. Sure. You know, it just wasn't very detailed with those older Olympus OM bodies. Nope. That's the biggest step forward, I think, with the OM one is if you shoot in their 10 bit mode, then you're getting just extremely sharp video. Rolling right. shutter is very well controlled. Dynamic range is very good it's for a big step up. sensor. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a big part of the appeal. A very versatile, very interesting, and very capable hybrid system. Next up, we're going to talk about Sony. I think you'll have a tough time coming up with a weird Japanese pronunciation for that. No, it's just Sony. It is, it is Sony. Sony. Yeah. Uh, and for these, I mean, they do make it a little bit difficult because you've got the R series with their A7, which are the high resolution ones, not great for video. Uh, then the S series, which are actually yeah. killer video cameras, great. but not great for still. So immediately I'm like, oh, well, the A1, but I do have some real reversations mm -hmm. about that. I mean, it doesn't have oversampled full width 4K. So you really want to shoot that in 8K or in their APS-C crop mode if right. you're using that. So a little less versatile, but their standard A7 series have always been their like 
well-rounded middle sure. of the road cameras. So I do think uh, number three is gonna go to the a7 IV. Sure, absolutely. I mean, I love the photography out of it. Uh, I like the fact that we have the new menu system. They've improved a lot of their interface, right? And uh, 30 megapixels plus is fantastic. I mean, you know, I think that would suit a lot of people's photography. So many lenses, that's such a big strength that's for the Sony strength, line. Yeah. But uh, what about video capabilities? Well, that's where we finally saw a real step up in that series. Mm -hmm. We moved to 10-bit video finally with a lot of excellent codec options yeah. for it. Uh, that great video autofocus. Now, this is not a perfect camera. That's why I still struggle with the Sony line a little bit because we do have pretty bad rolling shutter if you're using the full width of the sensor. Right. And it does have 4K 60, but if you go there, then it has to bump you to a Super 35 because again, that sensor can't read out fast sure. enough. And the really crazy thing about that camera is it has features in it like breathing compensation yeah. and their focus aids that we are not even finding in like the A1 and the A7S III. I mean, Sony's firmware approach makes no sense yeah. to me, but it's one more reason that this is one of the best stills video hybrids on the market. Absolutely. Okay, so number two, it's gonna be a Panasonic Panasonic. Panasonic. It's the same. Yeah. This bit really went nowhere. <laughs> you know, we've used Panasonic for so many years, right? So many different cameras. We love a lot of them. They make great products, you know, but mostly video centric. Yeah. And so we're thinking about, okay, what's a great Panasonic hybrid camera? Naturally, my first thought is, well, what about the GH6? Because I was really excited for this. I mean, we know it's got excellent video capabilities, great design, form factor, all of that. But I was thinking, oh, 25 megapixels, this is great, this is gonna be amazing. But we actually saw the photos, it wasn't that amazing. I mean, although it does have good resolution, it, it kind of lacks when it comes to low ISO dynamic range. Yeah, it time. is competitive when you get into the higher ISOs, but that's never ideal for any it's, camera. It's again shooting. niche, so I wouldn't Absolutely. call it an all-rounder. The other problem is the autofocus isn't great. I mean, you, you've got continuous autofocus burst rates that are pretty slow, so it really leaves this camera out when you wanna shoot things like wildlife and sports. And a lot of the other cameras we're talking about are better suited for more kinds of photography. Yeah, so I immediately thought of the S1H because that was a camera I was sure. using as a hybrid camera all the time. Uh, you know, you have that full frame sensor, the big increase in image quality there. Sure. Uh, still very capable for photography. The problem is they put a very aggressive anti-aliasing filter on it. So those photos are never as sharp as even the less expensive S1 or my pick for best hybrid out of Panasonic, which is the S5, mm -hmm. uh, which is, their starter for the full frame lineup, but I'd say it's actually a little better video camera than the S1 because you get a fully articulating screen. Sure, yeah, we'll and I do up. really love the smaller body on that. Uh, but you get so many of the goodies from the S1H with that. You've got that oversampled video, like an anamorphic mode on something like that. Still right. the waveform, all the stuff that we love with Panasonic cameras, and you're getting sharper photos and sharper video with right. that as well. You know, yeah, it's it's a it's a great way to go because when we factor in things like the price and then what you get, I think that's a huge winning deal as well. Yeah. It's by far one of the best, most affordable hybrid cameras you can get into. And uh, yeah, as much as the GH6 has amazing video capabilities, it just cannot overcome the photographic deficiencies. I'd say S5 is a fantastic solid choice. Yeah. Number one. Yes, what is your number one choice, Jordan? I think I already know though. Okay, uh, so if I were to pick mm -hmm. a photo camera, just for photography right now, right. money's no object, just go get the one that you want, it'd be a Nikon Z9. Don't you mean Nikon? Or if you're in the UK, don't you mean like Nikon? Or I, uh, if you're a samurai, don't you mean Nippon Kogaku? I defer to Paul Simon with this, uh, as all North Americans should. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> so I love the Z9 as yes. a photography camera. I was just incredibly surprised how capable it is for video and keeps getting better and better. Adding things like the internal RAW recording with it, the fact that your 4K video, unlike the Sony A1, is still oversampled, or you've got right. the option of 8K if you want it. Uh, now, the internal RAW, who knows, because there's a lawsuit going on between Nikon <laughs> and Red, that might go away, so get the camera quickly. Uh, yeah, start shooting RAW. Yeah, and keep that <laughs> firmware on an old memory card, but just unbelievably capable, and I can't think of any job, period, that I couldn't take on with a Z9, photo, video, anything yeah. like that. You're absolutely right, you know, and, and I don't need much time to talk about the photographic stuff, because yes, it's fantastic. I mean, the autofocus works great, it's a rugged camera, I love the interface, lots of customizability. The only complaint I have is that it's large, but you yeah. know, yes, you're right. The, the key thing here is we're talking about what camera could handle any kind of job, and I agree, the Z9 could handle everything. Whoa, Jordan. Whoa, we totally forgot a camera that we want to talk about completely. Uh, it's Fujifilm. F Fujifilm. Oh, thank yes, you. Yes, yes, the X-H2S. Now again, it was a prototype camera. That's probably why we, uh, we haven't mentioned well, that's, it Well, I had it on my list, absolutely. But 
I don't know if I want to rank it until I get a production version of that camera. Uh, so unfortunately, you're going to have to wait and see for that, which means you need to subscribe to this channel if you want to see my yes. final opinion on the X-H2S. There is a production camera on the way to us. Please do also like. Leave your comments below, though. What do you think makes a great hybrid camera? We'd love to hear that as well. Uh -oh, Put that down below. It's the two of us in the shot. So one of us is going to get covered up by like the subscribe buttons and uh, DP review yeah. channel. I, so, think, uh, I think we know who that's going to be. Great. All right, well, thanks for joining us, whichever one of us you can't see. And as always, uh, we'll see you soon with another episode of DP Review TV.